I thought it might be interesting to do a limited budget food challenge. So I know other YouTubers have done this. Uh, Mike Jevons in particular has done one pound a day and other YouTubers have done limited budget food challenges. I'm going to have a go at it myself. Slightly different spin on it, I think. I can't do a whole week or else I would have to take the time off to cook lunch and breakfast and so on. So we're going to just do it for a weekend, two days, and our budget for two people for the whole weekend is £3.88. So why £3.88, you may ask? Well, here's why. So it is one of each of the UK denomination of coins. It's two, a two pound coin, one, 50 pence, 20 pence, 10, five, two, and one. Three pounds 88 is all we've got to buy our food for two people for two days. We need to provide three hopefully balanced and nutritious meals a day for two days. So can we do that? Let's go shopping and find out. <laughs> So other formalities, let's just talk about rules for the experiment. So I am going to allow myself small amounts of flavorings and ingredients with a strict limit. So for each meal that we cook, for both of us, I will allow one tablespoonful of something from the ingredients cupboard. That might be herbs and spices, it might be a stock cube, it might be curry paste, it might be sugar, salt, pepper, whatever. And then for each served meal, each of us, me and Jenny, are gonna be allowed one teaspoonful of some kind of condiment or seasoning or something that we put on our meal. So that might be a teaspoonful of ketchup. It might be a teaspoonful of sugar. And that's all we're allowed to add to this, apart from obviously water. So that's the rules of play. What we're gonna do now is go off and cook breakfast for both days, because breakfast is gonna be like a rice porridge with stewed pears. And I might as well cook that all in one batch on the Friday night so that we have it ready for Saturday and Sunday morning. Okay, so here's the plan. We've got eight pairs in here, an even number. It was, if it's an odd number, we'd have to take it back because they are pairs. Um, so I'm gonna use six of these, I think. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. Yep, I'm gonna save two of those for a different meal. Six of them are gonna go in our breakfast for both days. So what I need to do with these is just peel them really thin so I don't waste too much. We're just gonna peel them and we're gonna stew them down with a little bit of sugar and water. So that's all of our pears into the pan. Quite a bit more than I thought it would be actually, that's pretty good, but it will cook down. Now we're just gonna add 
tiny little bit of cold water. Because this is for two meals, pears and rice, we get two tablespoons for two days worth of meals. So we're gonna have in with the pears, we're gonna have just under a tablespoon full of sugar, and then a tiny, tiny little pinch of star anise powder. And that's it. Star anise and pears makes the pears taste even more like themselves. So that pan is gonna go on a very gentle heat just to stew those down. And then we're also gonna cook our rice. In fact, let's move that to the back there. So we'll move the pears off to there. So one glass full of rice. Two glasses of water. So we're gonna cook this first by the absorption method which will absorb all of that water and give us cooked rice. And then when it's cooked, we're gonna put in a pint of milk and cook it some more. Okay, so we've got the pears cooking away nicely there. And the rice has almost absorbed all of that water. But I don't want fluffy white rice. I want something more like rice pudding. Now, this is not the right kind of rice for making rice pudding. Normally you'd use a short grain rice. But that's all we've got, so we're gonna use what we got. So now I'm gonna go in with a a pint of whole milk. Now the reason I'm using whole milk is it's just got that little bit extra creaminess that will help to make this a more palatable dish. And now I'm going to bring that back to the boil. Just going to make sure the rice isn't stuck on the bottom there. Gently bring it back to a simmer. Another tablespoon of sugar. So that's both tablespoons for both days for breakfast. Are now been used. So we'll stir that in, make sure the sugar's dissolved so it doesn't burn on the bottom. And then we just got to cook this now and reduce it down until we've got a creamy rice pudding, until that rice starts to break up a little bit and thicken the milk. Saturday morning and so it begins. So breakfast today is up to half of what we got here and half of this which is the cooked stewed pears. So let's get some brekkie. There's actually quite a lot of rice pudding there. When I left that in the pan the milk carried on absorbing into the rice and it's made quite a substantial bowl of rice pudding. Probably more than we actually want for breakfast but we'll see how we go. So yeah, it's a little bit kind of um, pasty like that, so I think we're going to just warm that up in the microwave to loosen it a bit. That looks like about a portion, I'd say. So I think I'll have the rice warm and the pears cold on mine. So actually, yeah, not about half of it. That's yeah, that's about half. It's uh. So that's our breakfast. Okay, so this is breakfast, rice pudding with stewed pears. I'm just gonna try a bit of it on its own, just as it as is. Yeah, it's lacking sweetness. We are allowed one teaspoonful of something on each of our meals. So I think Jenny and I have decided we're gonna have golden syrup on ours. So just about a teaspoonful though. 
so about that much and that's it let's give that a try now Actually, that's not bad with that syrup on there. That's, uh, yeah, that's okay. What do you think, Jenny? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Do you think there's enough here for breakfast? Yeah, it's about the same as my porridge. Yeah? Yeah. It's not as exciting as, as other things we might have for breakfast, is it? Yeah, but it's all right. Mm. Okay, so, well, that was breakfast, and we both finished our bowls, so hopefully that's going to give us enough energy for the morning. There is nothing now until lunch. There's no snacks, no biscuits, no elevenses. So, how do you feel, Jenny? Do you think that was enough? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay. So that was breakfast. Well, it's a beautiful, cold, crisp, frosty January morning. So we're going to take Doggo out for a little walk across the fields. Now we're going to go across the way we've been before and I've shown you in previous videos but there's some kind of construction going on over there and I can hear it from here so we'll take a look and see what's happening. So yeah last time I came up here which was sometime sort of mid to late summer actually it was when we were blackberry time this was just a field now it's being developed. I don't know what they're putting in here, possibly housing. I, oh, there's going to be a school here apparently, so they're building a school because the whole of this area around here is being developed for housing. Hopefully, when it's all done, we will still be able to walk through here. Poor Eva just now mistook the ice on one of these puddles for dry land and tried to walk through the middle of it. She really doesn't like water but she jumped onto the ice, which is wafer thin, and sank through right up, up to her tummy, so poor little thing. Don't go on there, it's not dry land. No, you can't walk on it, you cannot walk on it. Don't. No. Jenny's just spotted a thrush up in the tree. Is that a song thrush then? Yeah. nearly a song. Okay lunchtime. So lunchtime on Saturday we're going to have a kind of uh, ramen bowl type of meal. So I've got these chicken ramen, quite a small packet so I'm going to make that go a bit further. I'm going to have a bit of this onion. What I'll do is I'll chop the whole onion, we'll use about a third of it and I will freeze the rest of it chopped. We're going to use half a carrot, two eggs and some of this what's supposed to be a salad but we will put that in as greens to go in the ramen bowl we are going to have rice with that because we got rice with everything really this weekend so we're going to i'm going to cook a whole portion of white rice and we'll use about half of that for this meal and the other half later in another meal so for the onion i don't want to take off too much so i've really sliced a tiny little sliver off the bottom and top and fortunately it's a really nice onion so We've only got to take off one layer of papery skin and we're down to the bits we can use. So for this recipe I want sliced 
onions. And I really want just a, a few thin little slices. About that much. So that's going to be the bit we use today. The rest of it I'm going to slice some, dice some, and these bits here are going to go in the freezer and we will use them in other recipes either tomorrow or later today. So the two extra things we're allowing ourselves today is I'm going to use about just under a tablespoon of this Swiss vegetable bouillon powder because the the soup base that's in with the noodles will not be enough for two people. But I'm also going to use a tiny, tiny little bit of vegetable oil just to fry these onions off. Okay, so over here, tiny little drizzle of vegetable oil. That's about a teaspoonful. And our sliced onions go into the two eggs I'm just going to boil for five minutes. Okay so those onions have cooked a little bit now we're going to put a pint of water in there. Got our, it's about two teaspoons full of stock powder and we'll also have the seasoning sachet from the noodles themselves. Pretty much the same thing. The rice is done, so I'm going to rinse that in boiling water now. And that's the timer for the eggs. So, we'll take those off now. And we're just going to stop them cooking further with some cold water. So the stock is boiling now, the onions are fully cooked. I'm going to add the noodles. Now I'm going to break these up a bit because otherwise they'd be quite difficult to share between two people. Don't hate me. Okay, and I'm just grating half of my carrot, which I've scrubbed, not peeled, into the pan. The other half will go in the fridge, that will keep fine. Now I don't want to cook that too thoroughly, that carrot, that's just going to stay just ever so slightly cooked. Okay, that's it, now it's time to assemble the dish. So I'm just going to take these greens and shred them. Just chop once through like that, will be fine. And then we're just going to plonk in those greens and then just finish up with the eggs which are beautifully soft in the middle. And there we go. So, and the, the trick here obviously is we can use this rice, so take a spoonful of rice like that and give it a little bath in the stock for flavour, mm, that's good. Mm, I actually think that's 
that's not a bad meal considering that cost pennies. What do you think, Jenny? Yeah, it's nice actually. Eggs are just perfect actually, I don't know how I managed that. Okay, well, we've got two empty bowls. In fact, four empty bowls. So I think that was all right, wasn't it? That was very nice. Yeah. Yes, and I would have it again. Yeah, I think actually that was, considering that was so cheap, the ingredients were so cheap, and pennies we're talking about there, the eggs were probably the most ex expensive bit of that. Yeah, I mean, that, that must have been about 60 pence worth of food for two people for lunch. And I really liked that, actually. I'm going to cook that again because that was just a tasty meal. I think I might use better noodles next time if I'm not on a budget, but really there was nothing... There's nothing wrong with that. that nothing wrong with that, yeah. Tasty, substantial, yeah. full of vitamins. Yeah, I mean, we got... Protein. The, yeah, protein from the egg, vitamins, eggs full of vitamins as well, all the vitamin C in those leaves. It's all right, isn't that? Yeah. Yeah, happy with that. Now, the other half of this rice, which we've pre-cooked, I'm just going to put that in a container and that will go in the fridge. And we will include that in a future dish, but it's just convenient to have cooked a whole portion of rice because actually there are things you can do with cold rice that you can't do with freshly cooked rice. So we will probably fry this up in a future meal. Now, some people are a bit twitchy about the idea of reheating rice. It's perfectly okay as long as you chill it down fast. Treat rice like you would treat meat. Just get it cooked, chilled down fast in the fridge, perfectly safe. It's only it's only a problem if you leave it out in a warm place, and then you get um, there's a there's a particular bacteria that will grow on warm rice. But yeah, you get it in the fridge quickly, and there isn't a problem. Okay, dinner time. So we're going to do something with these parsnips. I think we're going to make a parsnip and chickpea curry. So my allowed ingredients are about a teaspoon and a half of curry paste, tiny little bit of turmeric and cumin. I'm gonna put that in with the rice, I think. And I'll use a tiny bit of oil as well. So again, a tablespoonful of additional ingredients. We're gonna use half this can of tomatoes, or maybe a third of this can of tomatoes. And I think we'll put the pears in there as well. I'm saving one parsnip for use in something else tomorrow. And I'm going to try to get a bit of caramelization on all of these parsnips. So we're going to now go in with onions that we froze earlier. Now it doesn't matter that these are frozen, we can cook them straight from frozen. So I've got that much onion left which we'll use tomorrow. Okay now this already smells really fantastic. Just onions and parsnips. So we're just going to get that transferred into our saucepan. Okay, now we've got a few little bits stuck on the pan there, and I'm not going to waste that. Just deglaze the pan with a bit of water, because all of that is flavour. That's about right, and we'll save the rest of that for tomorrow. This is the lid from a Nutella jar. And it fits just perfectly on a can like that. We've got our can of chickpeas and I'm going to put in half this can, including the water, which I understand you can use the water from these cans to make something a bit like meringue. So we'll try that another time, but not this time. And again, we can put a plastic lid on that, stick that in the fridge and that will keep until tomorrow. 
We'll need some extra liquid in there, so I'm just going to put half a cup of water. We'll bring that to the boil before we put the curry paste in. It's a pre-cooked curry paste. <clears throat> so one last thing to go in is these pears. Now, fruit in curries is just fine. I think we'll have slightly larger pieces today. See if we can keep these so that they don't cook away to completely nothing. Okay, so back over here, this is starting to come to the simmer now. So we'll get that curry paste in there. This curry paste is a, it's a Chinese curry paste. And it has a bit of a thickening effect as well as a, as well as obviously all the spice. And the pears as well, we're going to put in there. So quite a lot of food there actually, but this is our main meal for the day. So, and it's vegetables. So yeah, it's going to be quite healthy, but substantial. Okay, rice is going to be the absorption method again. So one cup of rice. We've got our two spices here, turmeric and cumin. Just going to put that in there now. Two glasses of water. Just give it one little stir to disperse those spices. And then bring to the boil till all the water's gone. So, and then parsnip and chickpea curry. It smells great. Now, we didn't have anything additional with our meal at lunchtime, so we didn't have our extra teaspoonful of stuff. So we have got up to two teaspoonful this evening, if we want them. So I think Jenny's gonna have mango chutney. I'm gonna have some of this, Vampire's Revenge chutney. This is a hot plum chutney, so this will add a bit of extra spice to my curry. So there's just about one. Two teaspoons left in the jar. That's handy. Okay. Well, let's give it a try. So, this has got parsnips and pears and chickpeas in it. What do you think? Mm. Yeah? It's alright, yeah. Yeah. I actually think parsnips go really well in a curry. There's something about the flavour of parsnips that makes them really fit well with the flavour of curry. Yep, happy with that. Right, I'm going to stop filming now so that we can get on and eat our dinner in peace. But uh, there we go, parsnip and chickpea curry with rice. And we've still got loads of rice left. We've actually got some leftover curry here. So in a second, we've got quite a nice big plate full of hearty meal here. So there we go, that's the end of day one. And we polished that off. We've eaten all the rice and all the curry. So, what's the verdict, Jenny? Very good. Yeah? Yeah. I'm happy with that, right. actually. I Very feel nicely that. full. Yeah. Lots of nice food there. Yeah. Felt fairly virtuous as well, actually, because it's just vegetables and rice. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's surprisingly good for the limited ingredients it was made with. Cool. Okay, so that's the end of day one. We've got nothing left to eat now for the day until breakfast tomorrow. So, see you in the morning. <laughs>